So welcome to part two of how to catch a crane swing. I hope you enjoyed part one. That was uh, the basic principles. This one's a little bit more advanced. This is about minimizing the swing. Basically prevention is better than cure, isn't it? So if you can, if you can make the swing as small as possible, then it, it makes for lesser work and it's, and it's safer. So I'm just going to go through all the different stages and all the different styles and techniques of, of minimizing uh, jib swing and slew swing. I will apologize in advance. The footage in this is only showing the front cam. You won't see my beautiful face explaining what I'm doing. I know, I know it's gutting. I know you'll be disappointed, but the reason for this is because I have, I usually have two cameras set up in the cab. I have the front cam camera, camera and the, uh, my phone filming me as well. But the phone for this one has, t has had to film the, the joysticks, uh, because I'll be using this for a, a course that I'll be launching in the near future. And I can't have a million cameras set up around the cab, it's just not feasible. So you'll, you'll hear my voice in the front cam, you just won't be able to see me, so that'll be that. So let's get into it. The first tip is going to be driving at slow speeds. Enjoy. Okay, so this is, a, this is number one, driving at slow speeds. <coughs> um, where that man is there, it's all stairs just to go up there to, to the next level. So what I'm going to use for my target is this stillage of glass panels here. Put a change on it there so I can see you can see. Okay, so uh, that's my target. You can see that it's quite close to those stairs with, where the other man is climbing up. So I'm going to head away and I'm going to go back to the target. Flip it over. So this is a very basic technique, particularly if you're first starting the drive. So I'm going to start slewing over in one. I'm going to use speed one. I'm just going to get the block down so that you can see it easier. So this is one, this is the slowest slew speed that I've got. You've got different settings of slew speed, so you can change change the speed of each slew, but this is this is a fairly comfortable speed. So you can see there's no swing really in that hook block at all, or in the chains. So when I get over there, there's not going to be any work to do might be a little bit of tidying up to do. There you go. So I'm above, I'm above it. There's no swing. I can just go down to the load and pick it up. Um, now if, I mean, that's if you're starting quite close. If you're like 180 degrees from that, so I aren't really going to be happy with you going round in one all that way. So, you know, you have to have a little bit of common sense. So that's tip number one. Lead you on to tip number two. Okay, tip number two. Gradually increase and decrease the speed of the motions. I'm going to start with jib. I'm about 10 metre radius here. <clears throat> the idea is, as you know, when, when you start the movement, the block gets left behind. So if I start out in one, and in two, I've got the hook block just above the horizon there, just so it's easy to see. So I'm going to hoist up as well to float it out. It's another trick for you. If not, that's it, I'll float out. Um, so there's a little bit of a backwards swing there. I'm going to wait for it to go forwards again, going into three. Don't have to do that, but it's just something I like to do sometimes if there is a bit of a swing in it. Now I'm going to go into four. It's, that's my highest speed on here. Each crane is different. You might have five speeds, you might even have progressive um, jib, which means there isn't any speed, you just progressively go forwards and backwards. But that's my fastest speed now. So I'm going to go full speed. I'm going to go out to about 35. 40 meters, 
I'm going to start slowing down about 10 metres short. I'm going to start slowing down now, I'm at 30 metres now, so I'm going to three. Two. I've got a couple of metres left. So I'm going to stay in two for a bit. Now I've got a metre left, so I'm going to go drop down into one on the jib. Half a metre to 35 metres. And it's there. And there's zero swing on that whatsoever. Or a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit. I can even tidy it up a little bit now at the end. So to go back, same again. Bring it back to 10 metres. Actually, I'm going to bring it back to 20 metres because that's about the radius um, that I need to be for the next hit. Full speed. Left hand up on the jib. I'm going to give it five metres short this time, so at 25 metres, and start slowing down. A very little swing on that. It's more difficult to see the uh, jib swing than it is the, the slew swing. Two metres left, drop into two. I'm not going to flow that in anymore because you can see that. One metre left. Half a metre. And stop. Tiny, tiny bit. Catch it. Very fractional of a swing there, but it wasn't even worth worrying about. But I like to be perfect. So that's tip number two, gradually increasing and decreasing your speeds. Now this works with the slew as well. So if I want to go back to the previous target of that stillage where the ladders were, I've got three speeds on the slew, starting one, there's a bit of a delay on the hook, wait for it to come over, down to two to keep up with it. It's going to lag a little bit again, it will gradually come back. Three. That's full speed there now. There's not much movement in there at all, is it? So now I'm going to start slowing down again, so I've dropped down to two. a little way to go so I won't drop down again yet. I'm going to wait for it to swim back to my right to slow down again to get on top of it. One. You see I'm almost on that stillage now. So now I can start tapping it over gently. There you go. So there is a jib swing on that. So at the same time, you can be killing the jib swing with the, um, the left hand with the forwards and backs of the jib there, or on a trolley if you need to. But this is just the basics. So I've just shown you one motion at a time. So to do that, I'll just jib down. kill that. That's still the centrifugal force. Uh, so there you go. That's that tip. On to the next one. Okay, so tip number three is to move, slow down, then move again. I say slow down, could even be stopped. So I'm in my starting position. I want to slow left 
to get back onto that stillage. So I'm going to go in two. So I'm going to go over in two. The block's gone to the, stay to the right, slow down to let it catch up, then move again to get back on top of it. I'm going to go back the other way, show you again. Move, delay in the block, slow down. I say slow down, I've let go of the thing there, put it into neutral, which does actually slow, slow it down. Do it in one. Let the block come back. On two. Or one. Just to, you can just stay on top of it the whole time. Now this works with the jib as well. So I'll get out of the way of the, of the, the line of the other plane. I get towards me. The voice down as well to keep it in your sight. Let go to slow down, let it catch up, and then I go again. There's no jib swing there at all. Just continue with it until it gets closer to me. Tiny bit of one to kill at the end. So that's tip number three. Let's move on to tip number four. Tip number four, lower the hoist. As you can see from the front cam, the uh, hook block is very close to the jib there. I've had to jib all the way out so that I can get it very close so you can get a good, uh, good view of it. So if I start trying to slew now this is actually easier to show you with uh, with a load on you can see there's a much there's quite a fast quite a fast slew on that uh, sorry quite a fast swing on that and it's very difficult to catch but if I was to lower it, lower the hoist, give myself some voice rope, swing slows down, it's easier to catch. tiny little bit on there so I've pretty much called that in one uh, there's a tiny little bit on there the trouble is at the end of the jib the the, uh, the crane rocks so the jib rocks side to side so you won't really ever properly catch it but that's that's pretty much caught cool there because the jib rocks side to side then the um, that will make the hook follow it so that's tip number four give yourself more hoist rope hoisting down people make the mistake of hoisting up when you very start, they think, oh, if I hoist up, that'll, that'll get rid of the swing easier. Pull it out of the swing, but it's not. You have to hoist down and give yourself more rope. So now on tip number five, so increase the radius as you slew round. As I spoke to you before about centrifugal force, when you when you slew, it makes the um, makes hook want to swing out. So I've got the hook at about 10 meters radius here. I'm going to jib out as I slew round, but I'm going to hoist up as well, just purely to keep the hook in your view, in the camera view. So just ignore the hoisting action, concentrating on the jibbing and slewing action. So I'm going to start slewing round now. If I want to go fast, this is more prevalent. I'll wait for it to start, start swinging out. And I want to go out with it. 
go out a bit more if I want to. And this can tie in with the previous one as it's increasing the speed as you uh, as you increase the radius. I make my way to that previous target of the stillage. Start slowing down again. On both the jib. go. Got quite close to the ladders there. The reason I got close because I haven't got a load on, I wouldn't have gotten that close otherwise. But this one ties in with um, what to avoid, which is in uh, the next video. There you go, I hope that was useful for you. That was part two, minimising the swing. Um, makes a smooth driving really. And it, it looks more professional when you know when you've got people looking up at you, or when you've got slingers working with you. They they want to work with you because you're nice and smooth, um, rather than complaining about you and moaning about you because you're all over the place. Um, you know when you've got site management on site, and that, you know you often get that, particularly on this the job I'm on now. You can uh, you know they often look up, see what people are doing, look up what the crane's doing, and if you're swinging all over the place, it doesn't look that great. Yeah, so I mean that last thing I did there, I allowed it to get close to the ladders so that I could show you the next video, which is part three, things to avoid. And I'll give you a little hint now. One of the things to avoid is catching the swing in the direction of an obstruction or a target. Hope that was useful. Make sure you watch the last of these videos, part three, things to avoid. I'll be coming up soon.